Hey friends, welcome to this week's episode of Not Your Mama's Podcast. And today we have the pleasure of welcoming a corporate veteran turned communications and empowerment coach. Jacqueline specializes in helping women become confident communicators and navigate their lives effortlessly through her proprietary systems and tools. Jacqueline, it's such an honor to have you back on the podcast again. I always love talking to you about having women embrace their voice and to communicate effectively and really own, you know, what they're saying. Same. I'm really happy to be back. We were just talking about how also we've watched each other like evolve. I've now got a three-year-old and an 11 month old and how how even just advocating evolves through that, which I know we'll talk about today. So glad to be back. So, you know, just diving right into the topic, how has your experience as a mom of two influenced your approach in managing motherhood? And what are some key lessons that you have learned along the way? So I love this question. Um, motherhood, especially with two plus kids, I've learned it's an absolute game of Tetris. Like it's not balance. And I think so many people talk about finding balance, finding harmony. But when you think about that in a literal sense, that's like this. And it's it's nearly impossible. And when I had my daughter, who's now three, I was like, maybe I can try and achieve this. And then I was speaking at a women's conference for JP Morgan and another woman, the founder of Z Supply Clothing was there and she reframed it. She's like, balance doesn't exist. It's a juggle. And that like blew every woman's mind. And then a couple of weeks later, I was like, I've got my three-year-old, 11 month old job. And I was like, this isn't balance. It's Tetris. Like you're constantly having these moving pieces. Once you think you get one set or in the right position, something might move. And it has to like totally be recalibrated. And sometimes it can sound like a really simple analogy, but it it blew my mind in actually giving me some ease around motherhood and took some stress off of what I was trying to achieve. And that balance is impossible. Juggling even sometimes is like I might drop something. So as I started to think about more of a game of Tetris, it just gives, I don't know, my whole body and mindset like ease as I'm navigating things. Not perfect. Um, but then there've been a couple other things that actually feed into that, that have been huge lessons. Um, all of us, I know we go through guilt, like it's unavoidable. And I was talking to my best friend about this yesterday. She's got a five and a seven year old. I just realized you need to pick your flavor of guilt. Um, is it your work? Is it cause you don't work? Um, is it you're paying more attention to one kid than the other, not your partner, not yourself? Like what is your flavor of guilt you're going to be dealing with? How big and heavy do you want that to be? Is it like something that you brood over or are you willing to be like, oh, this is kind of just the way it is, but I'm going to move on. And then actually building your toolkit to manage a lot of that, which is the third one of like doing my own work. And even since you and I spoke last, I've always done like my own work, whether it's like therapy or in training somatic and neurolinguistic programming, um, which is all about understanding and rewiring your patterns. Mm -hmm. But with two kids, like I have to do my own work when I'm triggered by a tantrum or my husband being able to be like, why does this bother me? What is it about me that's also being projected out there? Or is this about actually their own stuff? And the more that I do my own work, even if it seems like a hard thing, the more it actually makes situations easier. It's like there's this issue, figure out what it is, and I solve it and like move on. And the last one is I can't do it all. And like that links into the asking thing. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of us like feel like we need to, or there's an expectation and I can't, like, I have to absolutely ask for help, whatever it is and not, not question it. Like if it's what I need for survival or my happiness or my kids, like there's no other way around it. And the more kids I have and the more work, the more I need to ask. And kind of final thing is I, I, I've noticed some people say it's easy to stand here and talk about this and I coach it, but I didn't have that model as a child with my mom. So this is stuff I didn't think I had to learn like myself and why I love teaching it because I know what it's like to be in a very different place than I am now. Yeah. And it it is true. Children teach us so much about ourselves and and it can bring up our own triggers and things like that and it's really great mm-hmm. and i love that you and i like to advocate it for every woman listening to really do that inner work with yourself you know what i mean because then you really do show up better and you can solve those situations like the tantrums don't hit you the same as like they did before you know and you're able to open up your mind creatively to help solve whatever problems going on instead of like getting lost in 
whatever emotion that brings up for you, you know? So I love that. And, you know, we were also talking about like, you know, boundaries and how sometimes boundaries can hurt people's feelings and how we need that as mothers to be able to not feel the guilt, you know, when asking for help and things like that. So what are some strategies that you have found that are most effective, you know, in advocating for yourself, you know, and asking for what, you know, we need as mother and as women? Yeah, I, I laugh. I was like, what about this? What about that? But the short answer is it is my power of the ass framework. Like this thing that I'm, this framework that I'm known for and that I teach, whether it's women trying to advance their careers, trying to be moms, you know, all the things. And the framework is actually four strategies in itself. And I'll explain them, but it teaches you how to actually figure out what you want in your situation. Um, a lot of times, like we have a problem and we can talk to what blue in the face about what the problem is. We can't actually say what we want. So nothing changes. So there's this big piece of like, I guess I'm kind of skipping ahead, figuring out what you want. And then once you have all those thoughts swirling in your head, how do you actually package them and speak them in a way that you are understood and you are convincing? Um, whether you offend people or not, you do it in the most polite way, not people pleasing, but you do it in a way that has more finesse and that you actually get what you want because I found a way in creating these scripts of actually creating more of a win-win situation. Um, ultimately, so we can speak our truth, so we can get our needs met. Like when people ask what I do and why my life is kind of easier, less of a roller coaster, it's because I use these strategies to speak my truth about my needs, my children's needs, um, like, you know, you want it to be easier. You want boundaries. You want somebody to change a behavior. You literally got to ask them to do it. People cannot read our minds. So it was kind of convoluted, but the four steps and the strategies within the power of the ask were their clarity, conviction, confidence, and really like finesse. Sorry, I don't have a fourth C. If anybody a reader does, listener, let me know. <laughs> Before I was a mom. When I was still in the corporate world, like I, I was at Deloitte and Disney for years. So they give you this like type A box trajectory to fit in. And it just, it really didn't feel right. As much as I succeeded, I was tired, I was out, didn't feel authentic. And as I started to look around at other women and actually more men, some of my best mentors and influencers were men, what they did differently to not only say like, cool, here's what's on offer, but how do I make this work? for me and still succeed and be respected and appreciated in all the things. And very few people actually did all four of them. And that's why I went, oh my God, this is powerful. And they're really big skills in their self. Like, again, clarity. When, when I do workshops, like, I don't know, for hundreds of thousands of women companies or not, and we look at the four steps, clarity is the hardest. Most of yeah. us don't yeah. actually know what we want differently. So that strategy of being in a moment and saying like, what is wrong? What is bothering me? My husband, my children, my house. Okay, fine. What do I want different? That is like the number one, I think most important thing and hurdle for a lot of women, especially moms to get over. And when we are loaded with the emotions and the activities, it can take a little bit more to do it, but you can. And if it's helpful, one of the, um, first live like workshops I ever did. When I opened my social media, a lot of people have been reposting the questions in these steps and the Spice Girl song, like, tell me what you want, what you really, really want. So if that's even helpful for you to remember, like, what do you want in this situation? And then the second one, the clarity piece or the conviction is really about how do you organize those words so they make sense to somebody else. I talk a lot about the situation, the impact, the ask and why it benefits the other person. And within the power of the ask, the whole point is like I, the framework asks you questions to extract this information for you and then teaches you how to like place it in some scripts. Mm -hmm. So you know what to do with the swirling thoughts and you don't not speak or explode. And then the confidence one is all about like the mindset. What I found is a lot of us start with mindset work and I think it's really valuable, but whether people are really good in their head or really good in their body, once they know what they want, clarity, once they have that convincing case, then all the head junk comes up. Mm -hmm. Well, so-and-so is too busy. Nobody's done this before. Um, I don't want to offend somebody or be rude. Like so there's also for society too, like that head junk comes up that we need to actually recognize and deal with. Yeah. Or it will grind us to a halt or lead us to like explode. 
Um, so knowing how to manage that mindset of understanding what is that pattern that's stopping me or hindering me and how to work through it. And then the last one is finesse. And that's really, a lot of people call it executive presence. presence. Understanding, do you speak too fast or slow, too loud, too quiet, your body cues. Um, and all those four strategies and together, like they're magic. Um, when I look at the things that women are able to accomplish, how they change their relationships or even get promotions and still like time with their family, it's really just magical. But you, I found you can't just blurt out what you want. There's some of this prep to ask your question, self questions for clarity, you know, conviction, confidence, and actually um, the, the finesse. And it's, it's a rinse and repeat, but it's the biggest thing that's helped me through everything yeah pregnancy yeah and I love that because sometimes like okay I'm ready to talk about this subject like let's just say like with boyfriend whoever you know and I feel like I have what I want to say in my head but then when it actually comes to presenting what my thoughts are I'm like okay I'm a little nervous yeah. like I wait, like that did not come out how I was rehearsing it in my head. So I like that you have that strategy plan where you can write it down, you know, write down everything you are feeling, what you want to convey to the person you want to communicate with, and then how you can help structure it to where you can, you know, confidently execute your um, message in a, you know, bold finesse way. Um you know what I mean? Like, I think it really does help. Like, even if you want to go to the doctors, like write your questions down, you know what I mean? Because I feel like people are afraid to even advocate for themselves in the doctors. It's like, okay, yeah, whatever. But it's like, no, like we, we really need to do a little bit of research. Like let's write down, like this would help for people who have, yeah, who go to the doctors a lot and who are afraid to like advocate for themselves or even going through pregnancies and things like that. And after postpartum stuff and just like you said, life, work, relationship partners, I think it's really important to have a strategic plan to communicate because it only would bring you up ahead. I feel like in your not argument, but your What's the word? Your, your case, even just a yeah, your case. Thank you. I yeah. Mean, sometimes I laugh. It's like some people like, is it is it a case? Is it an argument? Is it an ask? And that can feel so scary. Like it's literally a conversation. Like when I laugh, like my husband or friends, they'll make statements, and I'm like, were you asking me to do something? Because I really couldn't tell. You know, like <laughs> everything is actually an ask in a conversation, and when we can maybe reframe it as just a conversation, it also decreases some of that stress. But we can get into the whole doctor and pregnancy thing. I actually even at one point thought about shifting my whole business to help women advocate through pregnancy because that's a game changer. Um, yeah, no, I, it is a game changer because yeah. I feel like I felt bold and like what I wanted to ask within when it came to like being in the room and all that stuff. I was like, oh, I don't, I'm fine. Like, I don't know what mm. came up. You know what I mean? Like, well, we're, I'm jumping ahead, but like, I think, I believe we are so trained to trust doctors, to trust yeah. their training, to not question them. And a lot of them come in. I know this. I've got God complex. This is what it's done before. And for some reason, I think there's a lot of it in like women's history and the way we were raised. We haven't been taught to actually trust our body and our gut. So you combine the two of those, trust yeah. the doctors and their research, not your body. And it goes awry. And like with my first pregnancy, I had like a very well-known OB. Everybody said, it was great. She shut me down. She told me I was stupid. Like as an athlete, she told me not to do a lot of exercises, destroyed my whole like body and even um, pelvic floor brain connection through the birth. Mm -hmm. Like everything was wrong with it. And cause I, I didn't listen to my own intuition. Like, I don't know, 18 weeks. I was like, I need to change OBs, but everybody's like, no, you're fine. This is what it goes. Second, I found a midwife and delivered in a hospital. And it was literally like the easiest process. Even my husband was like, that's what it's like to listen to a woman's body and have somebody talk you through questions and concerns and be welcoming of anything you talk about. Even if you started with, hey, this feels stupid. And they're like, fine, bring it. Yeah. Um, but we're, and I've since had a lot of women come to me and be like, I know you made changes. Why? This doesn't feel right. And I'm like, well, then listen to yourself. Like, listen to yourself. It's okay. Yeah. If somebody doesn't yeah. listen to you, change. Yeah. But, yeah. And I yeah. think we are always <laughs> learning how to trust ourselves and not you know, I'm still learning to trust myself, you know, I'm like, okay, like, oh, why do I think that? But it's like, oh, I felt that because I, I knew something, but I just didn't trust myself, you know, like, yeah. Yeah. 
Well, it starts and, with our parenting, right? Raising an 11 year old and a three year old. I asked myself, like, am I teaching her to trust herself or am I just telling her what to do or it's right or wrong? That's a whole other, like, that's a whole other topic. thing. I'm like, that's a good topic yeah. there, too. <laughs> uh <-huh>. so, <laughs> so, can you elaborate on some ways, you know, that women unintentionally disempower themselves and how they can overcome these challenges to, you know, achieve that? happiness and that support and that, you know, effective communication to whoever they're talking to. Yeah. Well, the biggest umbrella is we women unintentionally disempower ourselves when we don't speak our truth about our needs, listening to our body. We assume somebody else has more power or knowledge than we do. So we hold back or it festers. And there's now a lot of links between when we don't speak up for ourselves and deny that it's linked to actually a lot of diseases because it goes inward and it starts to eat at us or or then we unleash and we're considered crazy we blur out the problem and it's not a question um that actually happened on i was on a coaching call before this and a woman just like verbal diarrhea but she laughed she goes i dispute a lot of stuff that wasn't even a question right and we can disempower ourselves that way but I don't want to be generic in this. So I was thinking about like, what are some buckets that can really ground where we disempower ourselves? Cause we're going through our day. We need to know what to look for. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking like there's marriage, there's work, there's friends. We've talked about pregnancy and postpartum. So I love how that was like already present in the conversation. And then there's some everyday stuff that you'll blow your mind because a lot of what makes like Dear of the little, little asks, it's not the big stuff we wait for. It's like resourcing ourselves through the little things. So when I think about relationships, marriage, partnership, whatever type of like union you are in, women are often saying, I'm underappreciated, I'm overworked, um, we're all doing the unseen labor. Well, ask your partner to change a diaper. Ask them to unload the dishwasher. Come home early so you can go to an appointment or they can take the kid to an appointment. Like, don't take it all on yourself just because it's easier. And I know a lot of women say like, oh, you know, John isn't helpful. He doesn't know how he says he can't when he comes home, he's exhausted. Right. Or if he's been out and about, I've got a rhythm. He jumps in, he ruins it. Right. You are disempowering yourself because you are giving your partner now yeah. and you are continuing to take on that burden. Like, okay, I don't know how to do my daughter's lunch. Cool. Figure it out. Like it's just lunch or, um, you know, make an accident, make a mistake. Like nobody gave me a manual as a mom, but everybody assumes we do. So we need to push back and draw some of those boundaries, even if sometimes it's easier for us to do it. Like, you know, there was a day, I think my husband was like, I don't see Ella's backpack. And I could have grabbed it for him, but instead I was like, it's there, keep looking. I kept doing what I was doing. So it's really easy to keep just doing versus actually stopping and letting the other person do it finding a way to do it together. And I remember this because even as I was already teaching what I do, the power of the ask, one of my girlfriends uh, was giving advice at my shower for Ellis about four years ago. And it was ironic because many of us viewed her as, you know, fabulous human, but one of the most controlling. And her advice was let him do it, even if it's wrong. And I think everybody's jaw dropped, but yeah. she was absolutely yeah. right. Cause if we don't let our, our partners do it, they won't do it again. Like, or if we tell them they're wrong, sometimes they just won't do it again. So my only caveat is I do think a lot of women like to wield the power in the home. So by knowing how to do everything and their routine and their schedule, that is their power. Whereas their partner may have power, I don't know, in the workplace or money or whatever. So I would ask you to be honest with yourself, listeners, is this a power play for you? Like no emotion to that. Is this a power play? And if you're frustrated, what can you actually speak up about? And maybe even let it fall through the cracks. But in the long run, it's going to be so much easier. Like my husband and I are a phenomenal team. Um, my God, I could go on. I need to keep going. Um, work, right? I think there's a big one. A lot of women will separate who they are as a mom and who they are as a professional. And that's really freaking stressful. You are not two humans. And it's harder to actually hide those pieces rather than talking about what you need at both. And you're actually going to find that you connect more with people at work when you bring your whole self. So many women say they want to do. Um, you'd be amazed. Like I put an out of office on um, Wednesdays and it's like, I'll be back on Monday. The responses I get of like, that's amazing. I wish I did it. You've inspired me or like, hey, I've got, you know, kids of this age. How do you spend your time? Um, it's really interesting. But also to just generally women, moms or not, 
you disempower yourself at work or anywhere when you just take what's offered to you. You take mm -hmm. the hours, you take the work, you take stuff you're not even rewarded for. Like that's got to go. And then the other one, <laughs> friends, <laughs> we as women love to connect, I think, in supporting each other and whinging about our challenges, right? But women disempower themselves by, sorry, I use the term whinging from living in London, complaining to each other rather than talking directly to the person we're having an issue with who can actually solve our problem. A lot of women disempower themselves because they crowdsource their courage and their confidence. They crowdsource what they would actually want to say and then they kind of disengage what's maybe what's in their heart and true to them too. And a lot of times I think women want to be so supportive of each other that they actually spiral you. Yeah. Like it's not as productive. Like there's a balance I've experienced between I can support you and what you're going through and sit with these emotions, but I'm not going to make you feel worse and get heated. Um, Cause actually my, my brow lady yesterday was talking about got my brows microbladed, hence no makeup. Um, she was saying exactly this. She'll talk to her friends, but might get so worked up. She talks to her partner. She might explode. And that's not just isolated to her. So this is actually disempowering sometimes when we, we go to our friends to crowdsource problems, answers, and not go directly to the person we need to speak to, or it literally clouds the whole conversation versus like going direct, which can feel hard. But when you do it, it's actually so much easier. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about pregnancy and postpartum. And then the last one is like these little day-to-day -day things. Um, oh, this one drives me nuts. Complaining about a problem and then saying, but it's okay. It's not okay. Like it's literally not okay. I, I invite you to listen to how many like women do that. And I don't hear it in as men and just pause and be like, something's not okay. Like go change it. Um, women also disempower themselves when they don't negotiate. I'm in a, a Facebook group of probably 3000 moms from a new mom school. And there's a whole channel buying and selling. And I was selling like, or somebody was selling a, a new stroller and it's like, yeah, you know, great condition, 275. Another mom was like, oh, love my budget. Yeah. Oh, why don't you say my budget's 175? Can you meet me there? And I literally like, laugh to myself because I can see this watching all these women like not getting things products for their families their homes because they can't say here's my budget would you accept this what do they say no say you know anyway so um think about those those little tiny things um funnily one of my favorites that's super empowering is we went to a restaurant and with my two little kids we order when we sit down and when we order I'll often say look if it's possible can the like can the kitchen expedite our food. I've got little kids. They're taking time, mom, God bless them. And, you know, I also don't want them to explode for the restaurant. Maybe we can enjoy it. And if they can't do not worry about it, just possible. And our food comes out easily and they're like, no problem. So thinking about these little moments where you just keep yourself quiet, where you could actually ask for something mm -hmm. will make a massive, massive change. And that's really it. Where do you have a problem? Where can you ask and just start doing it in the little things? Yeah. I do that all the time at the restaurant. I'm like, they're going to explode. Let's get these kids meals in. Like I, I do that all the time. I'm like, can we, you know, I say it in a nice way, you know, and I'm like, oh my God, I don't know how long these kids are going to last. Like, let's get these kid meals in. <laughs> like, well, with humor, like us yeah. laughing about it and humor can soften almost any message. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, Jacqueline, that was such a great conversation. And I cannot wait to dive into the Power Mom Chronicles segment of the podcast and to find out what your answers are. And my first one is, what's a game-changing lesson life has taught you? Oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> I can actually manifest a lot of things. I just need to be very specific. Um, specifically, like, I wanted an ocean view when we moved down to Orange County, and we don't have one, but I actually have a massive painting I brought back from London of the ocean view. And I woke up one morning, and I was like, had my ocean view, wasn't specific enough. Um, <laughs> that and how to say no gracefully where people are okay, and I still end up getting what I want in a boundary. Like, that's game-changing. Yeah. Yeah. And who and what inspires you? people who are embracing conscious parenting. And we said this is a whole different topic, but how we respond to our children to not pass down our own trauma, project our own patterns, the things that we don't like or the things that self-sabotages, 
is it's huge and it's really inspiring because I think a lot of us, myself included, know what was passed down that we want to change. Mm-hmm. But it's also inspiring because not only do we want to like, I don't know, give our kids and I don't know, humanity a better chance, it's really hard. <laughs> yeah. It's it's hard. Stopping, thinking about things, doing our own work, looking at ourselves. Um, but it's so I think worth it and we'll find out in time. Um, but it's super inspiring every time. Like I think my husband and I go, Oh my God, that worked. Or we listen to what it takes in all of us to think about how to do things differently to let our children be seen, heard, express themselves, like be children and Mm -hmm. still into the world and no one to push boundaries. Hugely inspiring. Totally. And offer a piece of wisdom for moms or anyone really striving to find their strength and voice. Shameless plug. Go buy my book, The Academy, Contact Me, Power of the Ask. Like, I am so passionate about helping each of you instead of just saying, oh, I can use that. And then going on your merry way and nothing changes to actually change. Because when you find your voice and your strength, you are going to not only change your life and your family, you're going to inspire others. But even like you have fundamental needs and options and you you have a right to them and to be able to express them. And each of those four strategies we talked about in the power of the ask, they're, they're big on their own. They're required together. And then when you do it and you start instilling it, it's just like positive reinforcement and it feels so good. So yeah. And the best advice you've ever received. Stop thinking about what other people think. It doesn't always work for you. Figure out what you want and what you need then yes, how it fits in society. So things are like appropriate, but that's a nice to have what other people think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jacqueline, thank you for coming on this week's episode of Not Your Mama's Podcast. All of her links are down below in the show notes. Don't be shy. Go say hi. Grab her book, The Power of the Ask. And I hope to see you all in the next one. Thanks for listening. Bye.